Hello my soccer universe. I was about to say that I'm not gonna record any special video except my year-end videos um, unless something special happens. Well, a little bit downbeat but I actually want to celebrate the life of Juan Pele. Um, this is a big story. And I actually chose this 93-94 Brazil shirt with the three stars for a simple reason because these three stars are what will forever be linked with Pele I will caveat it teeny bit, teeny bit, uh, in this video as well as I did in my review of the greatest ever. Again, as futile as it is, and I reiterate my point, every era has their great players. I think it is absolutely uh, idiotic to a degree to really say this one was absolutely the best player ever. However, in the discussion, I think you're even a bigger fool if you do not consider Pelé. And for me, the legacy of Pelé is that of... He more or less event invented Jogo Bonito, or he at least popularized it. And I think another off overlooked thing, he's the first global soccer star and probably the first global soccer star of African descent. Those are things that should never be forgotten. I think this is the absolute legacy of this player. He made people go crazy. He came up in an era in the um, late 50s and the 60s where uh, the world was much more insular. He put Brazil on the map. Um, he is the one that made Brazil a world power in football or soccer, however you like it to say it. This cannot be understated. Before him, Brazil had not won a World Cup. Yes, they were close. Before him, Brazil were, have not won the World Cup. After he ended his career, Brazil were the eminent uh, football power in the world. It is as simple as that. That is all down to him. Yes, he had great teams. He had the help, but he was the cherry on top with his incredible scoring rate. Also has, has, has to be said. I mean, most of the goals that he counts in his goal tally were from friendlies. However, friendlies were a whole lot more important than they are now. Uh, I think we have 1,279 goals in 1,363 games. So oh, almost a goal per game. It's pretty uh, re remarkable. He also played at four World Cups in an era where this was not the case because the careers were not that long. And he played in an era where you could kick the players left and right. And that's what happened to him at the 66 World, World Cup, where, where this was probably in his World Cup he's history the only uh, negative moment where he just, Brazil left the group stage as defending World Champions as his top favorites because they were kicked, he was kicked left and right with a thick knee and could not continue there. The everlasting image also of Pelé and that actually is in really stark contrast of Maradona. He's always, he's always smiling, always feel good vibes. Uh, there was nothing uh, sinister about him in, in a way, which uh, probably made him as a human being potentially less interesting. However, I also have to say that even when he talked about himself, he often spoke of him in the third person, which tells me that the image of Pelé, the soccer player, and Pelé, the or Edson Arantes do Nascimento, Edson, the private person, those are two different ent entities uh, that he basically kept apart. And Pelé was always this shining, always smiling, always good-natured person. What he did in his private life, I think it's not as well known, at least to me. Now, um, when I started watching soccer, uh, this was, you know, 86, uh, the final I saw, this was my first game, I always say that. Uh, but when I, I really got into it in 1990, then in the aftermath of that, I soaked up everything that was out there reading-wise. And basically every book that I read, and yes, there is a little bit, it was not like to, 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 to today where everyone said, yeah, Maradona is great. And you had it, the books were sometimes a little bit older or already, you know, they were from the early 80s, let's say. There was no discussion who was the best player in the world. I think even 
in the early books in the 90s. I, I think I got a book about the best footballers ever. I wish I still had, or I probably have it, but it's at, uh, still at, uh, at my parents. I should have, 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 have it here. The section on Pelé just states in the beginning paragraph uh, the best ever. And it was a time when Maradona just did his uh, gr uh, great things in Argentina, uh, uh, in Mexico for Argentina. So uh, just to put this a little bit in context, yes, um, I don't think that Pelé was as glorified as Maradona was in Ar Argentina. I mean, Maradona was treated as a god where uh, Pelé's his um, uh, major nickname is Ohe, which is the king. So, you know, uh, maybe there is a slight difference, but I think what he achieved as a player is just uh, out of this world. In that time, as I said, where it was a whole lot more insular. Um, he was treated as a national uh, treasure. He could not leave Brazil at his height. I think Real Madrid would have paid a vast amount of money to Santos to have him play there and be their new, new pearl. It never it never materialized because he was not allowed to do so. Um, I think to see Pelé as a player, I have four scenes that come to mind that actually epitomize this player to me. The first one, probably the most brilliant one. And you know, you can watch YouTube videos Pelé did it first, which I find very entertaining and uh, very illuminating and also putting him a little bit more, a little bit higher up uh, in the way. But the first one is from the 1958 World Cup, the first goal that he scores uh, there. I think it was the 3-1. What a brilliant goal this is. He has the ball, he chips it over the uh, defender, then uh, stops it with his thigh, rolls it onto his foot and into the net. A an unbelievable goal by a 17-year-old. We are going crazy about Mbappé. Pelé was younger than him. It, <laughs> it is that incredible to me. Uh, the second scene that the other three are all from the Mexico World Cup. There is, of course, the header that should have been a goal that Gordon Banks saved. This is the most celebrated save in World Cup history, bar none. And it's from a near unstoppable header by Pelé. Then in the semifinal, the, in the most incredible non-goal ever, where he shows all his guard, where he walks around the Uruguayan defender, he plays the ball or to the left of the defender, walks around to the right, has an open goal but misses because of the angle that was too tight. An absolute brilliant scene. Everything you need to know is in there. And then of course, and maybe it's a little bit of, um, how to say, uh, a not so great uh, goal, but in, in the end it's still brilliant. The opener in the World Cup final of 1970. That header, ne nearly impossible position. And then to top it off, the fourth one where he just plays it into the, uh, the, 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 the way of Carlos Alberto, not even seeing where he is, just knowing that he will be there and scoring the goal. What he brought, he invented Jogo Bonito. He coined the phrase Jogo Bonito. What he did is he brought an improvisation to the game that was maybe known, but not in that term of brilliance. He did all the brilliant things before they became uh, worldwide uh, known. The other thing that I find really interesting is that he played only in the Americas. Because he played for Santos, he couldn't leave Santos. And maybe the one dark truth around this time is he did not win that many trophies outside of the World Cups. But for Santos, yes, he won some state champ, 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 championship, which were more important in Brazil than a national championship. He only won two Libertadores and then World C uh, Club World Cups in 62 and 63. Uh, so that was uh, an another thing. But because of his popularity, Santos did many tours around the world, which maybe prevented them from winning more trophies, but also allowed them to capitalize on the popularity of Pelé as a world star. In Nigeria, I think it was in 69, there was a civil war going on. Pelé came to play in Nigeria. They stopped that civil war for 48 hours so that everyone can watch in peace. One of those incredible stories. Pelé was an absolute, absolute legend. And then when he made some bad business ventures, and maybe this is one part, you know, uh, of course, he was, he had lots of hangers on. 
he got in financial trouble and then they moved to ML, uh, what is now NASL, not MLS, to the New York Cosmos, where he actually uh, took the game by storm. And for a short period of time in the late 70s, soccer was the game in America. And he became an absolute, absolute star. Uh, and him playing together for a year with Franz Beckenbauer, uh, Beckenbauer still calls this the greatest honor that he has ever achieved. So really, really, really great things that we can say. As I said, for me, when growing up, it was always between Pelé and Maradona. Um, I think the, again, I don't want to compare. Maradona was the probably the greatest of his age. Pelé was clearly the best of his era. Uh, his era overlapped with before uh, Alfredo Di Stefano and then Johan Cruyff. More on those two a little bit later. Whereas Maradona overlapped with, uh, you know, th there was a little bit separation in there. A again, uh, Pelé was more seen as the king. Maradona is almost in a religious figure in Argentina. Take for it wall, a wall, what it wants. I would say that uh, thanks to this always smiling personality of Pelé, Pelé probably uh, seemed like this unattainable and slightly, you know, very clean figure. Whereas there was always something sinister about Maradona, what made him a little bit more interesting and maybe more appealing to me because there were many facets and it was all out there. Whereas we never got to know it's Narantes do Nascimento. That's what I, at least I didn't. Let's put it that way. I think maybe others are uh, biographers and, and so on did know. Um, for most Europeans, he is synonymous with the Brazil shirt. He's the one who popularized the number 10. And only after him did the number 10 become the number for everyone else. That, I think, is also something that should uh, be clearly uh, said because uh, the number 10 was just another number, but he made the number 10. And since then, the number 10 is usually given to the best player on the team. That is also a legacy of Pelé, most of the time. I actually want to close this video with a few quotes. I found them all on uh, Wikipedia. And it might be hard to... Uh, yesterday I was reading them, I was welling up when re reading them. But, you know, uh, just from a few uh, people that are really mean something in the world of soccer. I want to start with Johan Cruyff. Pelé was the only footballer who, su who surpassed the boundaries of logic. Coming from who I would not necessarily say he was the best ever, but he was definitely the most influential player of all time. Player and coach. I think Johan Cruyff has a greater legacy overall in the game, but I would take it. Pelé probably was a better player than Johan Cruyff. And it's really, really hard, hard to say. Um, Franz Beckenbauer, Pelé is the greatest player of all time. He reigned supreme for 20 years. There's no one to compare with him. One that really, really hit hard, Ferenc Puskas. The greatest player in history was Di Stefano. I refuse to classify Pelé as a player. He was above that. That says something. Because uh, Di Stefano uh, is now put forward, uh, posited, and I did it also in my video, as one of the greatest players of all, all time who never played for an, uh, in, in, in the World Cup. Um, Juste Fontaine, French striker, leading goal scorer of the 1958 World Cup. This was when Pelé was a 17-year-old and they played at the, the semi-final against uh, France. When I saw Pelé play, it made me feel I should hang up my boots. That was the player who scored 13 goals at that World Cup. Tells you something. Bobby Moore, Pelé was the most complete player I've ever seen. He had everything. Two good feet, magic in the air, quick, powerful, could beat people with, with skill, could outrun people, only five feet and eight inches tall, yet um, yet complete play, um, yet he seemed a giant of an athlete on the pitch. Perfect balance and impossible vision. He was the greatest because he could do anything and everything on the football pitch. I remember uh, Saldana, the coach, being asked by a Brazilian journalist who was the greatest goalkeeper in his squad. He said, Pelé, the man could play in any position. Uh, Sir Bobby Charlton, I sometimes feel as though football was invented for his for this magical player. And during the 1970 World Cup, uh, Manchester United defender Paddy Currant uh, was asked, how do you spell Pelé? Easy, G-O-D. I'll end it here. I think this is enough accolades putting him in position. 
Rest in peace, Pele. The world will miss you. Miss your smile. I think my first, I want to end. I think my first mental image that I have of Pele is when he celebrated Brazil's win in 94 in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl. Pele dancing. Kind of smiling and dancing. That describes him very well. Any case, please let me know your thoughts on Pele. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel for see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon so to get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.